Hey guys, Nugs B here, and I just want to give a big thanks to the sponsors of For the Record, hashtag TogetherFTR. And the first one I want to give a thanks to today is Advanaclean of the Tri-State. Advanaclean of the Tri-State provides essential indoor air quality services to residential and commercial customers. They specialize in things like mold removal, water damage, dryer vent cleaning, and air duct cleaning. You can give them a call at 606-331-5001. And they do free estimates, so just give my buddy Joel a call, and he'll be right there for you whenever he can. He'll get you scheduled in. Uh, Their address is 4446 13th Street, Ashland KY. So if you need to stop in and uh, holler at him about something, just go on in. And this lovely establishment is ran by Joel and Pam Dooley. And these are great people. Like I said, get in contact with them. They'll do some free estimates for you, uh, get you all the way together, guys. And uh, you can also go check them out on Facebook at Advanta Clean of the Tri-State. And go be sure to give them a like. Go be sure to share their page and share it with your friends. And their website is www.advanaclean.com. Dot com slash Ashland dash KY. Another sponsor for today is my boy John Cannon at Straight Out of Makeup in the Hillbilly Flea Market. Not only does he have makeup at low prices, but this man is the fire stick king. I got to give it up. He's always taking great care of me. Uh, his are guaranteed with uh, free cable, Netflix, Hulu, NFL, movies and theaters, and more. I personally have one, like I said, and it's pretty great, to be honest. Uh, Go see him and tell him I sent you. But in the meantime, go like and share his page. You can go to www.facebook.com slash straight out of makeup. Or you can just search on Facebook, straight out of makeup. And uh, like I said, he's at the the Hillbilly Flea Market. So the address is 227 Russell Road. Booth 45, opposite end of Spectrum. So when you pull in, he's going to, you know, you pull around, you go to the other end, opposite of Spectrum, he'll be the first booth as soon as you walk in. A lot of great stuff, guys. Go check my guy out. He's killing the game. Uh, The phone number, 606-465-8296. So once again, big thanks to the sponsors. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Let's go ahead and get into this episode. It's for the record, son. Yeah. Yeah. It's for the. It's for the record. I said it's for the. It's for the record. Yeah, boy. It's for the. It's for the record. And we all are. We all together. I said we What's up, everybody? It's your boy Nugs B coming to you with episode 33 for the record. Hashtag together FTR. I'm joined by Michael Breen. You already know we in the studio right now, just chilling, getting some stuff popping. Uh, and as usual, today we're going to start off with the entertainment history segment. August 20th, 1992. Embroiled in controversy over his song Cop Killer, Ice-T doubles down by appearing in a police uniform on the cover of Rolling Stone. I thought that was really cool. Uh, That was four years before I was born, and uh, it's pretty ironic, you know. I mean, most people know this, but he played a cop after making an album. Well, actually, a song, my bad. The song Cop Killer, so very ironic, Ice-T. What are you doing out here? Come on, man. Let's get it together. Uh, August 20th, 1977, The Emotions hit number one in the U.S. with the disco track Best of My Love for the first of five weeks. Two years earlier, The Eagles hit number one with a song with the same title. 
Uh, last but not least, today, August 20th, 2016, former Three Doors Down guitarist Matt Roberts is found dead in a Wisconsin hotel room at age 38 uh, from an accidental overdose of prescription drugs. So that's what they ruled that. I really like Three Doors Down, man. I really did get into them. Like, they had a couple good songs. I mean, I know they were kind of corny. They were like the nickelback of their time. But at the same time, they were actually pretty sweet. They were the... They Let's get up the, to the mic. If you want to they care. were the thing. You gotta get up to the mic. Uh, yeah, they were su- they, like they just had the formula for like hits straight up, dude. Like their their songs were legit hits, and like you know they weren't like the best songwriters or whatever. But at the same time, they had a formula that worked, obviously, and it was relatable. And you might catch yourself singing the song, you know, and you won't even realize it, you All know. Right. So. Heart song, relationships. Same thing with Nickelback, you know? Like, you might say that you hate them, but, like, deep down, you sing Rockstar when it comes on, you know? <laughs> like, everybody sings Rockstar. I don't care who you are, bro. Uh, I got some facts of the day as well, my friends. Uh, all, ro- all roads lead to Rome definition. Uh, all paths or activities lead to the center of things. This was literally true in the days of the Roman Empire when all the empire's roads radiated out from the capital city of Rome. Do you know that? First road since Babylon to yeah. uh, connect all countries around. Yeah. Pretty crazy, man. I thought that was a pretty interesting fact of the day. There's a lot of history in Rome, man. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of crazy stuff that happened. They were the first ones to have way stations where you could just stop, like, gas stations every 30 miles. Yeah. That's crazy, dude. I didn't know that. That's wild. Yeah, Rome, man. It's wild. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the last fact of the day I have, in 1966, President Lyndon B. Johnson issued the first presidential proclamation honoring fathers, designating the third Sunday in June as Father's Day. Six years later, the day was made a permanent national holiday when President Richard Nixon signed it into law in 1972. If it were the politicians today, they would say no. Yeah. No Father's For Day. For real. <laughs> For real. No Father's Day, my friend. Don't need that. Crazy. Those. Yeah. Pretty wild, man. Uh, and, you know, shout out to all fathers out there who are doing the job for the mother and the father as well, you know. Like, there's a lot of people out here who are, you know, hustling by themselves, man, and grinding out for their kids by themselves, you know. Dads don't get the credit that they deserve. Uh, now we're going to get into Raiders Review, my friends. Uh, we went ahead and picked a, the top five songs of 2008 that we thought were our favorites. I'll go ahead and let you kick it off, man, and... Uh, you know, let them know what five you picked. Viva La Vida, Coldplay. Just get up to this mic a little bit, bro. For some reason I can't explain. <laughs> I know some Peter will call my name. <laughs> David Banner, Get Like Me. I don't really remember how it goes. Whatever you like, T.I. T.I., yeah. And Lil Wayne, a Millie, a Millie, a Millie. And Lollipop. Lollipop. Dude, that song was iconic when it came out. Seriously, like man. Like a lollipop. So good, dude. Loved it. Static Major, I think he was from Louisville, actually. The guy that was in that song or whatever. Yep. Yeah. Pretty sure he was from Louisville. Uh, and the ones I chose, my top five songs from 2008. First of all, I got to go with the Jonas Brothers, Burning Up, because I'm corny like that. And I grew up on the Disney Channel, and I'm just going to go ahead and give a big shout-out to the Jonas Brothers because they're back together, as most of you know. Don't be hating on your boy. Second one I chose was Busted Baby Part 2, because if you, I mean, if you've ever heard this song, you know it is perfect. It's like the perfect, like, mix of R&B and rap. It's one of those. It's one of the perfect R&B and rap songs with Plies and Neo. Plies was a thing there for a while. Dude, Plies was real big for a minute. He was making, you know, just like... He's still an underground it, artist good, yeah. going now. For sure, bro. But he was like that guy who would make – he was like the new Ja Rule. You know, like he was making like hit songs like about chicks and stuff. He was also like talking gangster stuff too, but I feel like he was doing a lot of like – like I said, like chick stuff, you know, for women. When Miami was first coming in with the uh, we, we Run This. Or, oh, yeah, DJ Khaled. Yeah, yeah. They, they were jumping off. He was yeah. one of the first ones to – yeah, dude. I, is he from Miami? Bro, he's from uh, Fort Pierce, uh, oh, okay. outside where I came from. Wow. That's crazy, man. Uh, my third choice was, and these aren't really in order. I just kind of you know put them down or whatever. The third choice I chose was uh, If I Were a Boy by Beyonce. Just because, man, Beyonce's my girl. I love her music. I really do. Her acting isn't really that great, but, dude, her songs are pretty legit. She's a uh, great singer. 
She's a good best singer out, but I don't really uh, dig her attitude most of the time. Yeah, you'll have that sometimes. Yeah, I'm big jobs. <laughs> Uh, the fourth song is uh, Love in This Club by Usher and I think Young Jeezy. I think he was in that as Love well. Love in This Club was one of the best songs. Dude, that song was sick. And Usher's sick to begin with, you know. And, like, I don't know, man. Love in This Club, seriously. I remember when it came out, man. I remember when the video came out. Like, that song is sick. I still bump that song sometimes. Everybody loved Usher. I used to sing Bedtime to my first <laughs> girlfriend around here. <laughs> Bedtime. That is funny, man. <laughs> and, uh, you know, back to the Three Doors Down. Shout out to them. My fifth pick was It's Not My Time by Three Doors Down. So I thought that was uh, pretty legit. And then we also did our top three movies. Since I'm already talking, I'll just go ahead and kick my three off. Uh, these are my top three movies of 2008. If you guys want to join, just look up the movies that came out in 2008 and drop your top three. Uh, Pineapple Express. As one of them, just because, dude, it is hilarious. And if you haven't watched it, you guys got to go check it out for sure. Uh, second one is Step Brothers. Once again, everybody's seen it, I feel like. I feel like everybody's watched it before. But super, super hilarious. If you haven't, really, really great movie. Super funny. Uh, and my last choice, like I said, these are in no you know, uh, order at all, is uh, The Dark Knight with uh, Christian Bale and uh, Heath Ledger. So I had to wrap that one up, dude. That Dark Knight series was sick. Super sick. Best interpretation of Batman that's ever been made. I picked uh, Hancock, one of the funniest uh, Superman or superhero. superhero movies. Yeah, it was pretty funny. It was yeah. pretty funny. He's like a I drunken mean, he's superhero. Sitting, he's sitting in the uh, trailer, and he, uh, well, that's a little X-rated. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Man, my second. Uh, Iron Man was one of the, the beginning best, of the MCU movies. The beginning of the MCU, the uh, you know the Marvel Cinematic Universe, man. That was the first one that came out of it was Marvel. Something new. It was it big, was... dude. It was new and big, and literally is the reason we got all those movies. And most of the movie is just him in, yeah. in a room yeah, by himself, straight up. And that doctor, yeah. Either that or he was tinkering with his toys. Yeah, yeah, ten, that's good. Ten thousand BC. Uh, picked that. Uh, it's it's the ancients. It's the ancient um, during like ice age, like hunter gathering. It was ain't, pretty good. Yeah, they come take take them from the steppes of Caucasia and take yeah. them all the way to the pyramids. Yeah. And the slavery was used to build, and it was a pretty good story. Yeah, pretty intense. Man, ancient for visions real. and stuff was used. That's you know y'all know that my vision everything on Celtic and stuff. So. Yeah, pretty wild, man. It really is. Uh, and also uh, another thing I was gonna say is. You know, another good movie that's along those lines is uh, Apocalypto. Did you ever see that? Never seen it. Mel Gibson was the director. Uh, it was super good, man. I really, really liked it. And uh, I think it was I about watched like something a, last night about him and a bunch of weird looking kids mm -hmm. in the background. Was this, like was some, like, this was it, like, this was like, it was like a hunter gathering thing. It was like a village in like South America, I yeah. believe, like a Mayan village, maybe. They painted or something white, right? No, these were like, they looked like. Like Native Americans, kind of, I guess, like that, like you know, that type of vibe to them. I can't remember exactly where it was at. It's been a while since I've watched it. Uh, most of it is, I mean, I, th I think all of it actually is in like their language, their native tongue. So you got to read it. But dude, it's intense. Like it's it's a pretty crazy. I was just watching a crazy movie. commercial the other night about John Daly where he was doing the Oscars and they showed that Apocalypto in the background, a little funny yeah. skit. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. Yeah, Apocalypto was a pretty good movie for those of you who haven't watched it. And Mel Gibson's great, man. Like, I really, really like Mel Gibson as an actor, director. I mean, everything. He's all around pretty great, dude. I'm not going to lie. So, the first thing we're going to get into today is uh, going to be a question for you, actually. So, let me ask you this, my friend. If you had to pick one animal to represent you as in who you are, as your personality, your character, you know, characteristics, or, you know, whatever... What animal would it be to represent yourself? It'd probably be a wolf. That's what I said, too. I said a wolf or a tiger. Or a lion. I said a tiger or a wolf because I feel like, you know, tigers are pretty much solo. And I feel like I roll solo to a degree. Uh, but also I feel like kind of a wolf as well because they can be solo or in a pack. You know, so like I feel like I can kind of rock with both. I like lion because the lion uh, of the tribe of Judah, most mm -hmm. of the people, the Celtic people in Appalachia, got that when they grow their beards, a similarity, yeah, a look. Right on. 
Yeah, dude, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, but I, like I said, man, I feel like I'm good in a pack environment. I'm also good in a solo environment. So I would definitely agree with the wolf, man, for sure. Yeah, I'm a loner. Yeah, I feel that. Most situations. Um, yeah, I definitely feel that, man. But like I said, you know, <clears throat> I can go either way. You know, either way I can go. Um, so next thing, I want to take a second to, uh, you know, talk to you guys about checking out the website as usual. So for those of you who haven't checked out the website yet, go to www.togetherftr.com. And you can buy merch on there. You can check out all the episodes, uh, and the merch gets sent directly to your house. So you don't have to worry about linking up with nobody or nothing. You can just get it sent right to your door. Um, you know, we have the knowledge tab you can check out with a lot of cool stuff you can learn. Um, we also have the server life tab, excuse me, uh, where you can participate. You can comment on those and, you know, get involved with that. And uh, also, I just wanted to take another minute to kind of, you know, let everybody know out there and spread awareness about a good friend of mine's nephew. Uh, He passed away. He was 13 years old. And, uh, you know, anybody who prays, you know, or you you guys, you know, have prayer groups and things like that, if you guys could just keep him in your prayers. Uh, If you're not into praying, you know, if you can send good energy to uh, YG, uh, Ray Duckett and his family. Uh, Like I said, they, you know, uh, he lost his nephew and pretty sad time for them and you know if you guys can just take a second and there's uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get the uh the fundraiser thing they're uh doing i think it's a gofundme and i'll put it in the description you guys can share that donate for sure um you know any little bit helps and you know just send some good prayers and some good energy their way because they really need it you know he just randomly died 13 years old uh from what i read he was at football practice um and just collapsed and you know just really really sad and Takes, like I said, it takes a lot to take care of uh, dead loved ones around here. Yeah, it's sad, and like I said, you know, I just I really feel for him and his family, and you know, it's a real sad time for them. Real sad time for them. Um, you know, I just wanted to spread some awareness of that and let you guys know that you, you definitely need to send some prayers their way and donate some money if you can, if you have the extra. Um, also, I wanted to spread awareness on another situation that had hap- happened around here. Um, with uh, Callie, for those of you who know, uh, Rick May and uh, Linda Pemberton, their daughter had been, um, you know, abused by Bobby Brantley, a piece of crap guy, like, you know, just, you know, did some horrible stuff, and it's real bad, and, you know, if you guys can send some prayers to them as well, and, you know, pray for their family, and, you know, send some great energy to them, I'm, I'm almost positive there's still a fundraiser going on for them as well. Uh, so I'll get the link for that, and I'll put it in I the saw, description. Uh, I saw some cops down in Flatwoods today mm-hmm. uh, bringing her home. Or oh, yeah, she she went home today is what I saw, actually. Uh, at 6 o'clock, Linda had posted. Uh, well, she had posted at 6 o'clock they were going to bring her home today. So I hope everything goes great for you guys, you know, and I'm glad you guys got to bring her home. And like I said, you know, I, I'm really, really sorry. I can't even explain how terrible I feel for you all, and it's just horrific. And like I said, anybody who prayers – or anybody who prays and is in prayer groups and such and in church and, you know, just in the community in general, just spread some great energy for those guys and their whole family. And like I said, it's just a horrific, you know, situation that no parent should ever have to deal with on both accounts that I'm talking about right now for, uh, you know, both children. You know, it's just a horrific incident. And I'm really, really sorry to all you guys. And those of you who have it definitely need to donate and help these people out. They really need it right now. Um, but, yeah, I just wanted to take a minute and let you guys know about that for those of you who didn't, which I'm sure most of you do. But for those of you who don't, you know, now you do. Uh, so we got some topics today, my friend. And the first one we're going to get on to is what do you think <clears throat> Excuse me, will be the end like of our country that will pretty much like bust us back to a third world country and or like, you know, you know, really – destroy and like infiltrate our government or whatever it may be what do you think will happen how do you think it's going to play out the wheels are already in motion china infiltration into our government mm-hmm. politicians um, be sure to scoot up to the mic please saudi arabia um a lot of outside countries are already they've already bought the politicians the corporate wars it's it's already happened um portland last week was it portland or seattle 
Um, one of them, they were uh, clashing between what they call uh, right wing, mm -hmm. which they try to lump everybody in Appalachia in, yeah. and the uh, basic uh, fascists, they they call themselves Antifa, yeah. but they are the Nazified fascists. Yeah, that, that's definitely a form of fascism, so, 100%. Yeah, what they'll do is they'll take a couple cities, spread, spread. Mm -hmm. They won't hit Appalachia because there's not much room for Antifa here. It's but, very true. You shut down real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so kind of clarify on what you mean, though. Like, what do you think? Like, you, so you think it's going to be just like a takeover? I think China takeover. will. China is rising, okay. and they're putting money in the pockets of everybody that can be bought. California is almost bought off. And Fair I think it will become paid for by China sooner or later. So you think that China is going to be the downfall of our country? Our sins, or what you would call excess of America, yeah, is going to be the downfall. If if it comes, it's it could still change. It's a good point, but at the same time, you got to think. I mean, I personally don't think that China could touch us to a degree. Like, yes, they do own us in a sense, and that makes sense, and I agree with that. But at the same time, I got to say, I don't think it'll be them. I, th I don't know, because here's the thing. I mean, how would they ever... The only thing would be an inside infiltration. There's no way it could be like they would attack us. The military, our military is the strongest on Earth. That's what I'm saying. Still. So, like, I mean, there's no way they could attack us. It would have to be on a sleeper level or, you know, internal infiltration. Well, I was reading uh, on the next topic here in a couple minutes on Q. I was reading uh, back a couple months ago... How basically South America is being emptied, and there are already Russian assets and Chinese assets in South America getting ready to set up shop. Could be true. Talk Definitely. about military bases in the woods. and Yeah. Definitely could be true, but also you got to think that, I mean, this isn't the first time that's happened. you got to think of the Freedom Fighters, bro, and like the... Uh, uh, like, that's the whole thing with Freeway Ricky Ross. Like, the Nicaraguan... Uh, it was like the Nicaraguan, I don't even know what it was. It Communist. was Freedom Fighters. Was yeah, it was like Freedom Fighters, bro. I think that was the, the you know, correct term for them. For them. And uh, it was people, those people were actually supposedly being funded by our CIA uh, from cocaine. Yeah. They were selling cocaine. Like, they had people like Freeway Ricky Ross and, uh, oh, my God, I can't think of the guy who was above him who ended up ratting on him. Actually, he was Nicaraguan. Uh Oh my God, Videl or no, not Videl. It was something I can't remember his name. As soon as I hear it, I'd know it. Uh, but he's the guy who ratted on him actually, and he said like came out and was like he was an informant for the CIA and worked for him and sold dope for him and made him millions and millions and millions and all the money he got, not all of it, but like a majority of the money he got had to go to the Freedom Fighters. Bro. It seems like Straight most up. of the puppeteers that have been pushing the drugs on American people and yeah. destroying us are of the government of this. Yeah. I can't, Those are world you, leaders. You as can't well. really put the government, uh, our local governments, in contact with the CIA. That's a whole other level yeah. of. It's like a private Catholic it's like, type. It's like a, a weird private organization. That Mostly Nazis is what it was. Yeah. Back to, in the seventies, eighties, and early nineties. Yeah, to an extent, straight up. Yeah, people who were very, very racist. You know, a lot of white people. After really, World War you know, II, they brought pay, Operation Paperclip. They brought them all in. Most yeah. of them joined the CIA, the yeah. Space Force, all these different yeah. things. And then they started moving in to the, uh, not the Navy. The Navy's always been an American bread type Think so? deal. I feel like Marine and Army as well. Yeah. They've always had the constitutional oath to keep it for the people. Yeah. I mean, there definitely could be sleepers who have joined our military. Though. Oh, yeah. It's no doubt about possible. it, there is. I mean, it's possible. It's any branch of military just because of how it works and you know another crazy thing man i was talking to my good boy lambo shout out to him uh you know we were talking and it's like i, I might be butchering it and i might be a couple years off but dude it's like 20 years or like 21 years or 19 years or something like that just to get into the united states if you have a sibling who's already here and who's already a citizen dude that is crazy but here's how it works though Let's say you are Mexican, okay? It's going to take you longer to get in than it would somebody who's from, you know, uh, 
Norway. The people that or, do? Or the, 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 the population that is greater trying to come here, it takes longer to get here, but people from different countries who don't have a lot of people that are here get in a lot faster. Just like the, How unfair is the that, people dude? that grow up in America, the foreigners are allowed to be given free debt for you know credit when they get here, but yeah. the people here get have to live here, and they get screwed. Yeah, also, well, I mean, yes and no. I can't, ag- I can't agree with you to a degree because that's how, uh, you know, a lot of immigrants get their way is because the, the government does offer them things they don't offer people who live here. I don't really know why. We're allowed to ruin ourselves from kids and yeah. teens, yeah. and they come here and they're just – they're not, there's nothing wrong with them, yeah. but it's the lenders that say, oh, these people will do what they're supposed to do. Here's another thing you got to look at it. <clears throat> Think about all the people in America that we're all spoiled. We're all like t- – typically people from, who come from other countries are pretty well disciplined. They won't take advantage. Yeah, they're it's, like – they're pretty well disciplined, bro. And like I mean I get maybe why they want to give you know immigrants uh, – because they know it's sacred what they're being given as a gift. Yeah, they yeah. grew up in hell. Yeah, that's true. That's true. They all grew up in horrific environments, dude. So, not all, but like I get where you're coming from. It's a gray area, though. There's a lot to it. Like there's a lot to discuss on that. Oh, yeah, there's still – there's political pr- prisoners. There's uh, rich families. There's yeah. all kinds of different people. Yeah, dude, that's for sure. And like it's really strange – you know, like the whole Julian Assange thing, like that just happened. That was weird, man. Some weird stuff going around. You know, like follow the rabbit. Yeah, like dude, he. I mean, how long was he at the what was it? The English embassy, Ecuadorian right embassy in England. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it was in England. Okay. Uh, and man, he just he. I mean, they kept him there. They took all the social media. They took everything away from him, his phone. He literally couldn't go outside. Oh, it was a matter of time, and they took him. Couldn't go outside, man. And, uh, you know, he said he hadn't been out they, – they say he hadn't been outside for like eight months or something or nine months or something crazy like that. Almost a year, dude, of no, nothing, just sitting inside. They tried to set him up yeah. is, is what said. Maybe. Accused of statutory rape or yeah. something. I mean they usually do things like that to get you out set of Set people house. up. Yeah, that's Lock true. Lock you up until you can prove yourself innocent <laughs> 20 years later. We all know how that goes around here. Yeah, that's true. It's very true. Uh, it's really sad too, because I mean, WikiLeaks or WikiLeaks was legit, dude. A lot of things came out, and you know, a lot of truth. It was all right, like not maybe not all of it, but like now a it's lot. been blended with so much propaganda. Who knows and, what that you don't know what's true anymore? Yeah, I mean, just it's like fake. the news. It's fake news, dude. It's weird. <laughs> you are fake news. <laughs> We're living in strange times, though, man. We <laughs> really are. Like, it's really weird. Everything is just so like backwards. I guess you could say. Like, it seems to me. Like, growing up, I mean, obviously when I was growing up, you know, I, I didn't really think of things the way I do now, obviously, and I wasn't into politics, and I wasn't into how things work in the world, but it just seemed so different. Like, it just really did, man. Like, in the past, excuse me, in the past 15 years, things have changed dramatically, dramatically, and change is inevitable, and I get that, but at the same time, there's people who are much older than me saying the same thing. They're like, dude, things have changed to a crazy amount. It you used know? to change over a hundred years. Exactly. Now it's yeah. moved one one year Ten years equals or something. twenty. Yeah, yeah, like something weird, you know? And like that's another thing. It's like you either got the people who are like, yeah man, things are changing crazy. Like it, it, it you know, everything is changing. Or it's rapidly. never gonna change. That's I literally you took the words out of my mouth, dude. Or you got the people who were like, Oh, nothing's changed. It's not it's changing. It's always gonna be the it's, same. It's always like this, blah blah blah. It's like, dude, come on, get real. You people are serious right now. Things are changing. Either get with the times or I don't know, man. You fall behind them, I guess. I mean, there's nothing else to do. And I'll throw in prophecies with that. Hopi prophecies, and then you got the uh, revelations where in in the end that all of the uh, information will be spread in a matter of no time, basically is what it says. Right on. Paraphrasing, my friend. Yeah, uh, me personally, I think the end of the world, not the end of the world, but the end of our country, we kind of got a little off topic, but like the end of our country, I personally think it'll be a class war. So it goes along with what you're saying. It's like a, you know, power struggle, you know, so on and so forth. But I feel like it'll be a class war, rich against poor. I don't think it'll go to race. Uh, I don't think it'll be like martial law. I personally think straight up it'll be a class war. Like the poor people will eventually get 
we'll get tired of, you know, being under the boot, you know, pretty Revolutionary much. Revolutionary War in uh, France. Yeah, it's maybe something similar to that, but I don't know. I really don't know, man. It's weird because, like, the rich have, man, it's hard to say no to money. It's, it's hard to say no. It's a class war now if you think yep. about the people that are in ownerships of the fo- poppy fields. Oh, yeah, 100%. And how do we that's, all? I think that's why we went to, went to the Middle East, dude. That gold and oil. I don't really think the oil. I think oil was like last string, though. I don't think it was like our main reason. Like they tried to play it off, and everybody thinks. I think extra. it was gold, and I think it was heroin, dude. Straight up. They like, had to take out the Middle East. Yeah. They had oh to yeah. Set up ISIS. Takes a dom out of power. Uh, they. I mean, they're the reason that Al Qaeda came about too. You know, whatever, man. The Taliban and all that stuff. That's all our fault. Family ties. Yeah, and that's the thing. You know, I, they had to get Saddam out of power because, you know, they needed to be in there or they need to be take. They need to take control of it themselves. You know what I mean? So when you kill a person like Saddam, that's how you do that because I mean he was going against the grain. He was about to make his own money. I mean, it sounds horrible, but when Saddam was in power, it seemed like. The Middle East was kind of in con- like in control. He kind of had control over it a little bit in comparison to what it is now. I mean, now it's just pure wild, wild west, like, you know, whatever. I don't even know who's in power over there anymore. But it seemed like, granted, correct me if I'm wrong or if anybody knows different, but it seemed like when Saddam was in power, things were kind of in order. Granted, he was doing horrible stuff, and his politics are not good. He kept I don't, order with an iron fist. That's what I'm saying. I don't. But his people love, well... To a degree. I feel like they loved Gaddafi him. Gaddafi was loved. Saddam yeah. was hated. Yeah, that's two different countries, though. Feared, yeah. You know. I'm talking about Saddam. But I, it was, there was a, a dude that came out, a colonel, that said uh, after 9-11, mm-hmm. they brought out papers, and they said, uh, said what's this? Uh, boss, they're, they're planning to take out all the seven countries. Yeah. And he said, what do you mean? He said, uh, they're going to take out Libya. Iraq, Syria, Iran, um, a couple other. Mm-hmm. But this was 2001. Yeah. So. Long time, dude. All of them fall on the list. Yeah. Saddam is linked with Gaddafi. It was yeah. all in a big plan. Oh, yeah. All world leaders, like all war criminals, they, they're they all in cahoots. I mean, they want to be cool with one another because if, you know. They're all, they all chit chat. Yeah, if it goes down, dude, then they need allies. Yeah. Even the the biggest warmonger and the biggest you know person needs allies. You they, need allies in war. They trade Cuban cigars, but well, when they have, have to pick sides, then people die. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. And it's crazy, you know. Uh, you know, like I was telling you about the family on Netflix. For the for those of you who haven't checked that out, you guys got to go get that in, man. The family uh, documentary on Netflix, super cool. It's about Doug Coe. Uh, I'm not really going to go into it that much. It's just a good recommendation. You guys got to go check it out. It's a pretty good watch. I think it's like four or five episodes. Nothing crazy. Quick watch. Uh, but, yeah, like Doug Coe meeting with all the war criminals and stuff, man. Like you got to rub elbows with everybody to get that power, you know. It's like that's why I never did want to be any kind of person like that because you end up end up having to sell your morals. Oh, yeah, dude, 100, eventually, eventually. I would say – I would say mm, 80% of people who go into politics have – I'm not going to say 80. I'm going to say like I'm gonna say like 40. I'm going to take something off, bro. Naive. I'm, I'm going to say 40% of people go into politics with a good attitude, with good ideas, with good intentions. But then they turn around and they get everybody scared has a weakness, off. bro. Every single person on this world has a weakness. So who is to say that you and I wouldn't be as weak as the next man? We and don't then know. You come Everybody in with has a vice. Jeffrey Epstein, yeah. and why people are turned after yeah. they they say one thing before they get in office, and then boop, uh, what happened? Yeah. Well, Jeffrey Epstein's in the news now, and a lot of politicians seem to have dirt under their belt. Yeah, one hundred percent, dude. It's a uh, it's a weird ring that is going. A lot of bad things are going on, and like it's getting swept under the rug, and. I don't know, man. For those of you who don't know, you need to look into these things because these, th- these things are important. And you have to, you know, if you don't care about where you live, then why are you living? You know, like if you don't believe in something, you if can't not, believe in children anything. are being hurt. Yeah. If you don't care about children, anything else. Children, I mean, men and women, I mean, this is a big thing, you know. And 
It's just, it's horrible to think that nobody, not nobody, but, you know, people are just looking the other way, man. It's like the thing with Harvey Weinstein, dude. Everybody who was connected to Harvey Weinstein in any type of way with a friendship should have been indicted. They should have all, Oprah Winifrey, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, uh, George Clooney, uh, whoever else, bro. And the reason they throw the word conspiracy theorist out there is so you will never look into these things, and you'll be blissfully stupid and won't pay attention to it when it pops oh, up yeah. on the media. 100%. Oh, that's just nonsense. Don't, don't believe it. Don't yeah. think for yourself. Just yeah. believe us. We're good, and we've always told you the truth. Yeah, and that's another thing, you know, like... People, they want to, people want to, you know, blindly follow things and they don't, because here's the thing, like, with conspiracies, yes, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say that I agree with every single conspiracy, because I don't, I don't believe in all conspiracies, man, some of them are dumb, you know, but at the same time, some things have been proven to not be a conspiracy, that it was legit, we were being, you know, hoodwinked, whatever you want to call it, whatever, man. Operation Northwoods. I mean, 99%. I don't know if this is the direct quote of the percentage, mm-hmm. but above 90% of the politicians are sociopathic or psychopathic. Oh, yeah. You dude. cannot have empathy when you do things and lie like they do. So most are sociopathic and empath- or, uh, lack of empathy, yeah. psychopathic. This is a new world coming about. So now the new politicians, I'm not so sure if they are or not. But the old ones? Oh, yeah, bro. The old guys, horrible people. Horrific. Done horrible things. Horrible things. Backdoor deals. We're talking some bad stuff from people, man. They come straight out of colleges where you make backroom deals and you shut your mouth. Oh, yeah. That's why I like the whole – that's why they think like the whole Freemason thing. Like all the people that are plugged in with that, they think, you know, it's so secretive and – I don't know, dude. It's uh, there's a, spooky. There's there's upper upper levels, and then there's your low your lower level worker type people that are good oh, yeah. people and don't. Yeah, know. they just don't know. They just they got a job, man. That's how it goes. Just like the church, you got your bad ones, and then you got your good ones. One hundred percent. Next thing we want to bring uh, to light is uh, Q. You know, we want to talk about Q a little bit and let you guys know. Um, I believe I can't remember what the YouTube name was. I think it was John M. You know what I'm talking about? The one that had a couple of Q videos on there. Anyways, long story short, Q is pretty much an organization. I'm, is that a, a way yeah. to call it? I guess. Yeah, it started. It's an organization. It started out um, one strange post on uh, 4chan. Yeah, and it says. Uh, something about Q. Go ahead and I'll Yeah, look it up. well, I mean, you know, long story short, Q is essentially an organization like I don't know if you guys remember Anonymous a couple years back, but it's it's pretty much anonymous. But Anonymous got ran over by the FBI and like they got, I don't know, that's what I heard at least, and that's what I read that they got raided by the FBI and then they were still doing it, but they were pretty much getting ran by the FBI. Like they got played. That's and, what I heard. And that's that's the uh that would be the media's take on it, that Q Anonymous is just a bunch of people trying to fool you. Yeah. That it, it was infiltration. Well, I mean, there's some great ones you can check out. Uh, it's called, uh, what was it, um, what's the remastered one that uh, I sent you the other day? You'd already seen it, but it was, uh, oh man, I can't even remember. What was it, uh, Why They Ruled the World, I think, maybe? Yeah, look it up and see exactly which one it was. Oh, Q, uh, Plan to Save the World. Plan to Save the World, that's what it was. Sorry about that. Yeah, check, go onto YouTube, check out uh, Q, just literally the letter Q, uh, Plan to Save the World. Really good watch. Uh, For those of you who are already enlightened in life, you probably will know most of the things they're talking about, but you'll learn some new stuff. Uh, whoever's running it, man, they're they're pretty smart. They, they they're brilliant people. They know what they're talking I'll about. I'll read th- now. This is Google. I don't believe anything that comes from Google anymore because yeah, it's, it's hard. mostly left leaning people that want to brainwash. It's hard, you. dude. But this is how they explain it. Q anonymous is a far right conspiracy theory. Now, well, I'll read it first. Detailing yeah. a supposed secret plot by an alleged deep state against the president Donald Trump and his supporters. The theory began on October 2017 post on the anonymous image board 4chan by someone using a trip code Q. Presumably American individual that may have later grown to include multiple people claiming that they have classified information. It's supposed to be pretty much people who have worked 
in higher up situations and people who are like politicians who are like tired of this. They're pretty, they're supposed to be the good guys. They're supposed to be freedom fighters for yep. American Constitution yep. and the military and polit- uh, political places, mm-hmm. some overseas, some just people that are fed up with um, how everybody in America has been done by the communistic type of totalitarianism of yeah. surveillance Tyranny. state. Uh, the list goes on, my friend. Literally, it's just horrible. And, you know, the thing about it is it's, you know, Q, if if it's not already ran by, like, the FBI or CIA and it's just like a trap, you know, just like Anonymous got trapped and stuff or whatever, if it is actually what it, it says, you know, it's good. Like, I'm, I'm down with it. I will join the cause, like, you know, because I am tired of how people are being treated. I mean, the low-class people were treated like dirt, dude. Goyim. That's what we are, my friend. For those of you who don't know what Goyim is, look it up. And that's what they call us, straight up. We are Goyim to them. Pork. Cattle. Slaves. Cattle, dude. We are slaves. And that's the thing, too. Like, it's just crazy to think, man, that, you know, all these people are just bowing bowing down to just listening. Oh, yeah. Like, in the labeling, man, the segregating that we're experiencing today. Conspiracy theorists. Far right. Yeah. Left wing, neutral, gay, uh, black, white, uh, Christian, Muslim, And then they Jew, come in with uh, trans, trans Whatever. Gender. Italian. You know? Like, whatever it may be. Like, whatever you are. is just everybody has a label. And we can't just be like, hey, there's that guy. Like, and then you come you know, in with all the that lady. all the gender specifics and all these things that they want you to shut up about that that keeps you from speaking out on anything good and anything kind. Very very uh, sensitive subject. Uh, you were uh, you were about to you were you know referring to the gender pronoun thing. Uh, here's my take on it for everybody. You know, just for the record, straight up. Uh, here's my thing. I will literally call you whatever you want to be called. I respect everybody's wishes. Uh, I'm cool with anybody wanting to be whatever. And typically, for those of you who know me, like really know me, I usually ask. I usually ask. Like I'll be, I'll like take you to the side and be like, "Hey, man," or you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, <Whoops>. whatever. <laughs> you know, like I mean, I, I just say "man" and "dude" to everybody. But like, <laughs> know. you know, I'll be like, "Hey, uh, what would you prefer me to call you?" You know, just because I feel like that's a respectful thing to do. Because I wouldn't want somebody, you know. If, if my kid or, you know, somebody close to me was, you know, uh, wanting to be something specific and somebody was not respecting that, I would not be cool with that. It, it doesn't affect me because I'm a heterosexual white male. Like, when it, it doesn't comes affect to me, me, I'm just a regular, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm just me. You know I what just I mean? Want I, the, I, have, I don't care what you call me. It doesn't matter. But there's some people who really, really care about Oh, yeah, yeah. It, you know? And that's and I mean, fine. I respect that. that. That's freedom. That's American. Straight up. And... The only thing I, I'm bothered by is messing with the children. I was literally, you took the words out of my mouth again, my friend. Great minds think alike. Hashtag together FTR. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's my thing. That's when it gets weird for me, and I'm going to have to disagree. And anybody who wants to come on here and debate, like, let's go. Like, I'm ready, baby. Like, because if you can convince me, I will shake your hand. I'll give you a hug. I'll do whatever, and I'll tell you I am wrong. But in my opinion... I do not think we should be modifying children. We should not be giving them hormones. We should not be doing any type of thing to chemically imbalance their growing, their development. Now, after you're 18, make your own choice. I'm from a generation that was over-sexualized, me personally. And it confuses you for life about yes. when it's good to have yes. sex, when to not push. Here's the thing. How to act. It's, it's, it's not good for kids. Here's the thing. Let's be clear. There are 100% people who are born a woman who should, who should be a man. We can agree on that? There's, that's just the truth. There's people who are born a woman who should be a man. Vice versa. There are people who are born a man that should be a woman. Yes, I agree with that. Science tells you that. That's the truth. Some people were born with the wrong chromosome. That's just what it is, man. They came, they came out of the womb, and they are not what they were born. That's just how it is. But here's my thing. That is not every single person who is wanting to do this. And I don't think the parents should have the choice to make for a child. They said it's like In, 30% it, of the population. Well, here's, here's the thing. Like, you know, my thing is 
like I said, I feel like the parents should not have the option. I don't think a parent is – like, here's the thing. I don't think the child is ready to make the decision. Popularity contest. Exactly. They're trying to be cool with their kids. I don't think parents should be – I don't think you should try to be your friend or you should be your kid's friend. Like, and to an trying, extent. And then the, and the worst thing is when a parent tries to be popular by doing these mm-hmm. things. And that's another thing, you know. I don't think the parent should have the right – to make the decision for their kid on that regard, and I don't think the kid should be able to make its own decision in that regard. Because here's the thing: I wake up feeling different every day. I know people who have wake who have woke up. They can make they, their decision to dress that way if they want, but of not course, sexual I'm talking change. modifying. Yeah, I'm, I don't care about dress, bro. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care what you wear. It does not bother me at all. I could care less how you want to dress. I don't care if you want to wear makeup. That is clothes. Wanna, yeah, bro. It doesn't matter to me at all. I'm, I'm, I'm an advocate of doing what you want. But at the same time, if you're modifying a child and you are giving he or she uh, growth or not growth hormones, but hormones, and you're pumping them with hormones, and you're doing this, you're changing and you're doing their that. brain for life, dude. You're cha- you're you're literally chemically imbalancing their brain. And here's the thing. They are not ready. People change every single day. I wasn't so. grown until I was 30. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the thing. you got plenty of people who are in the same boat, man. And if people aren't going to – people change their mind too much. So if you do this to a child, let's say this child is 20 and then you've already changed this child and they're like, man, I don't want to do this. This is not what I wanted. I was a kid. I feel different now, as do we all. Every single person, every single person in their life has – thought about this when you're 25 you think you're smarter than when you were 20 when you're 22 you think you're better and you're you look better or you're smarter or you're whatever than you were when you're 18 it never ends it's a cycle so if we change all the time why would you do that to a child it's not fair and then they got the argument i saw because um I I watch a lot of debates and stuff, and I I love it. I think it's awesome. I I think we need more debates so people can rationally talk about things and not be ignorant to the subject. So my thing is they're like, you know, these people say, oh, well, uh, if you wait too long, it doesn't work as well, or kids who do it, they, you know, not all of them want to change and blah, blah, blah. Like, dude, that is nonsense. It's a cop-out. I don't want to hear none of that. That, no. If my child, if my child's like, yeah, I want to... You know, I want to be a dragon. I'm not going to take, like, you know, reptile skin and glue it on to him, you know? Like, I'm not – it's just not how it works. He's a kid. Kids don't know what they want. They I don't want even know what a, I want. A mermaid cut everything off. That's, that's, I'm, I'm everything 23 out. years old, and I don't even know what I want. So how can my kid know – how can they know what they want? My hormones still rage Oh, yeah, dude. I don't I, know what yeah, the hell it's, is going it's on. It's crazy. Seriously, man. <laughs> And like, you know, uh, like I said, though, I just don't agree with that. I'm cool with doing whatever you want because I'm an advocate of a free spirit and I feel like all people should be treated equally and I feel like everybody should be able to do literally whatever they want. That's the Constitution. As long as you're not harming people, I'm cool. Do what you don't want Don't hurt people. God, don't steal. It's your choice. Uh, don't rape people. Don't mess with kids. As long and as And that's it. That's my, that's my rules. not anybody hurt by it. Literally don't care what you do. Doesn't bother me in the least. But when you start pushing pushing your Don't mess ways with the on children. people, pushing your ways on people, killing, stealing, raping, uh, all that, no, nah, then we're not cool. We're not cool anymore. I, I can't get down with that. There are still men left that want to protect people. Yes, of course. There's still great men out here, and there's still people who are the good guys, man. So speak like, up. Yeah, seriously. Quit being quiet. We need more people to speak up and say things because— Because it makes people like us not want to talk anymore. Yeah, dude. I mean, I'm never going to stop, man. Like, just because—here's the thing. Like I was saying earlier, you know, you don't change the world by incarceration or violence or you don't change the world by coddling and being all sensitive to everything. You change the world by letting people know what's going on and giving them the knowledge. So once you pass the knowledge to the youth, you let them make the decision on their own. And if you give them— the right template of honesty, then you're good. You'll give them the you know the blueprint on what they need to know in order to be a better place to leave for their children. And when all these technological people with riches and billions think they know better than us, when everybody's silent, it makes me want to give up hope on people's It speaking. does. It really does. When people are just quiet and they're like, oh, yeah, I don't man, give we're, up never hope. Gonna, we're never going to get past it, blah, blah, blah. I don't like that. Uh, victim mentality it's it's ridiculous and we have been like just 
uh, beaten over the head with it. Yeah, like it's instilled in people to play the victim. That's one thing that I quit listening to so much 90s rap for because yeah. it's just dark and leads you down a dark Dude, hole. Dude, those were some very, very... These guys had some dark energy around them. They were killers, bro. Killers in the 80s and 90s. You go, those were dark times, dude. Like, from what people say, when they grew up, you know, or like when they were alive during the 80s and 90s, living in LA and New York and like big places that rap was really popping off. I grew up in the flood area where the cocaine came in down in Miami, and it's. It's not people you want to listen to about life. Man, it's crazy, dude. If you want to go to it's jail crazy. or kill yourself and or murder people, kill somebody, and yeah, like, listen. yeah, listen to it. But like, here's the thing. Like I said, man, it's so weird on how dark people were back then. Like how just nineties grunge is the same way. Negative, very suicidal, negative, dark impact on. And people. we wonder how the generations of killing yourself with pills oh, yeah. and all this come yeah. from. It. Well, it was implanted. By the companies at Music, top. yeah, TV, all that stuff, man. Whether it was their fault or them grabbing on something and liking it more sure. and molding it. it sure. And, you know, you know, as well as I do, temptation is the worst thing we experience. You know, it's hard. Like I said earlier, it's hard to say that we wouldn't be as weak. We can sit here and say, like, yeah, we'd do the right thing and blah, blah, blah. But if a person hands you $3 million, it's hard to say Unless you're a minimalist and you don't care about money and you don't have like, that was where I, yeah. if unless you don't have responsibilities, you don't have kids, you don't have no ties. I never then, had that. Yeah, exactly. So. so you, a person like you, wouldn't want the money, but they would find what you want. Oh, they hey, find yeah. it. Yeah. They find it, bro. Whether it be Use because a loved one against you. Oh yeah, they have. Everybody has an addiction to a degree. Everybody has a vice. Everybody has weakness. And whether it's women or gambling or drugs or money or a uh, family member being used against you, uh, land. Maybe you want land. Maybe you want to get away from everybody. Whatever it is, they're gonna find it. And typically, that's, why that's DMX how it has such a hard time. Yeah, got addicted he, to crack. Yeah, yep. Sucks, man. Really does. Back to Q. Yeah, back to Q. Uh, for those of you who don't know about Q, once again, go check it out. Um, Q Anonymous plan to save the world. Yeah. YouTube or Google it. Google really doesn't give you any information, so I'd go to YouTube. Some free press is still out there on YouTube. Yeah. And there's also, they have their own, like, uh, thing as well. You can, you know, you can let get on. Let me look that up, yeah. Well, I was going to say, I mean, we can let them find it just because, like, I mean, I'm not trying to put it out there because not everybody, right, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's something you need to find. Just look into Q, those of you who are tuned in right now. Uh, check it out. And let maybe we can think. keep talking on Facebook about it. Yeah, maybe. they might. They, I don't know. They might shut us down, boy. I, went, I got a few on I YouTube, know. but I kind of shut up after they uh, had the FBI claim it as a conspiracy theorist and Q were a threat to national security. <sighs> That's what God, their new thing is. That's scurry. Scurry, son. How do you bring war on the saints and the freedom <laughs> lovers? <laughs> Crazy, bro. Let me ask you this before we go any further. If you could pick one rapper to come back and you get to see them perform live, who would it be? Wow. One rapper. Tupac. Really? He thinks most like I do. Uh, yeah, that's what's up. Uh, me, personally... Oh, man. I'd probably want to see Easy e I'd love to see him perform. Easy. You know? Easy does it? Dude, that song was sick. Rolling down the street. He was once. A, dude, it was serious, man. Yeah, that was a banger, too. And it's so crazy that most people don't know that Ice Cube wrote all those rhymes. Straight up. Wrote that whole album, bro. Yeah. Straight up. And he wrote that song, too. Uh, next thing I want to talk about uh, for a topic is, in my opinion, I feel like and there's, it's a kind of a gray area as well, and, you know, I'll, I'll kind of get to that and spread some light on it. But here's my thing, okay? I think nobody should be able to get over $1.2 billion. I don't think you should be able to reach further than that. I think we should all have caps, and that goes for corporations as well. The cap would be bigger on a corporation than it would an individual, but at the same time, it needs to be a cap. So what I think is you can make $1.25 billion. Like, that's the cap. So once you make $1.25 billion, the 0.25 of that needs to go to the world, not your country, not your politician you like, not for gambling and prostitutes. It needs to go for the world. So whatever the world needs, that 0.25 goes to the world. So that goes for every billionaire out there. So if we did that with all billionaires, 
seriously think about how much we could do for the world. We would already have renewable energy globally. We would already have our oceans cleaned by now. We would have our landfills taken care of properly or whatever they need to do to get all the trash off of our planet. I don't know. Send it into space. I don't know. Do something. Speaking of, hashtag Boyd County Greenup get recycling. Yeah, well, <laughs> they got this uh, recycling downtown. Maybe now it's Greenup that doesn't really have it. Yeah, well, I mean, you have to be a resident of Boyd County, I'm pretty sure, which is kind of dumb, but, yeah, you know. I think it's a choice still. But uh, Yeah, I mean, you'll have that. But, no, like I said, though, I feel like, you know, it, you need to donate to the world if you become a billionaire because here's the thing. Let's put it in perspective. Drake is worth $150 million. That's not even a quarter of a billion. And that man lives lavishly. Does whatever he wants. Probably has 20 houses in the U.S. Mansions. Not just houses. Mansions in the U.S. if I had to guess. Uh, Lives great. Does whatever he wants. Gets any girl he wants whenever he wants. uh, Flies on private jets. He lives a great life. And he's only worth $150 million. So if that doesn't put it into perspective, then what does? Somebody who's worth $50 billion? Dude, what is going on? You need to share the wealth with the world. The world is in a bad place right now. But here's the gray area. People would want to be, you know, would combat that and rebuttal that with, oh, well, you know, they worked hard for their money and they did this and it's capitalism, so blah, blah, blah. Yes, cool. They worked for it. I really don't care. I really – that's not a good enough argument for me. I really don't care. Some Work as hard as you want. Some of those opportunities by uh, being vultures yeah. and destroying everything that came in their path, meaning Very people true. and other people. And Very true. Stealing. A lot of people. People starting their foundations off drug money. I mean – Now that you see um, – Facebook coming alive, you see all these people in Appalachia beginning to make money on Facebook. Yeah. That's all we needed. Yeah. But they never wanted to help. Yeah, very true. Uh, and here's my thing, you uh, know. Not all, but... Yeah, not all. And that's the thing. That it's it's like with police, all right? So I'm pro-law enforcement, as I feel like everybody should be. Like, you know, like, I feel like you should be pro-law enforcement because if we didn't have law enforcement, it would be, you know, straight-up chaos. But... Here's my thing. The reference is with cops, it's 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 a job at the end of the day. There is no excuse and you there's no room for excuses when being a police officer, but at the same time, there's going to be crappy people in all walks of life. So, it's going to happen. Most people are crappy sometimes. Yeah. And it's going to happen, dude, and you're going to have it with police officers, you're going to have it with politicians or whatever. But the thing is, like we have to have cops like we have most to. most most thing i get aggravated about is the court systems of kentucky yeah it seems like the poor people are the only ones used to help the system here's my here, here's my uh big statement for you my friend that's in the world that's not just kentucky they don't care about poor people but it's worse here though uh is it though i don't know they say kentucky they say i don't know hey, west virginia is pretty bad too kentucky is the most uh corrupt i will check that maybe again I, so be. maybe it was a meme yeah, it could have just Kentucky. been internet nonsense. Kentucky. But, corrupt uh, uh, court systems. But, uh, yeah, like I said, man, it's it's just a, it's a weird thing. And I definitely agree with you. Like, the judicial system is not for the poor people. Like, I can definitely agree with that 100%. But at the same time, uh, money talks everywhere. It's not just there, you know. Money talks of anything. Kids playing sports, uh, schools hospitals whatever man money talks like if you got enough money you money can talks live to be more than love does straight especially up with women 100 percent. here's the thing if you got bread they'll never you can you. live to be a hundred you can live to be a hundred bro and yeah you know but kind of you, you know what i mean though like if you have a lot of money you can do stem cells you can do hgh pumped into you you can get whatever you want man that's why all these old guys that's why they don't die they just live forever and ever and they're rich man and another thing i want to talk about is how crazy it is when these politicians start out when you see a politician and they start out their net worth is like fifty thousand dollars bro six years later look at their net worth again any politicians you like right now go look at their net worth if they, for the year they started in politics. Hashtag term limits. Believe that. And that's another thing, too, that needs to happen. I mean, with it, I feel like the president, the presidency 
terms is how all politics should be. Every single person. Mayors, I think it should be. Police officers. Congress, uh, yeah, to a degree. But I feel like it's different on police Sometimes officers. Sometimes family, it comes into family. True. You know what I mean? And it's that's true. really not a good place for And that's when if you system. got like a horrible, you know, if you guys have ever seen Crash, you ever seen that? Good movie, dude. Just watched it this year, actually. My brother recommended me to watch it, and uh, it was real good. It's got Matt Dillon in it. It's got everybody in it, bro. When Who there's not it? term limits, you get to like the Ireland and English countryside yeah. where it is the... The class system yeah. where the poor are never allowed to rise and the never. people keep being brought into these families of systems that have been there for long times. Yep, the good old boy changes. system. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, I man. have friends and, and a lot of friends from South Shore, different cops and, you know, buddies, enemies uh, in, in the law system and, you know. I'm a good person. If I did you wrong, if I did something wrong, I'll take blame. All the all the police officers in sure. Greenup know that. You know, I'm a truthful dude. They've yeah. seen me under arrest, and they've seen me helping people on the highway. And yeah. I have nothing against anybody. Yeah, man, like I said, I mean, I have no... And people who are like, yeah, F the police, yeah, yeah, F the police. It's like, come on, dude. Like, What would we do with anarchy? Uh, that's what I'm saying. Especially like, right now with all the drugs. That's what I'm saying. Like, you really want to say that... How would you feel if you wouldn't be saying that if your grandma was getting robbed? You know, if your mom was getting held at gunpoint, your little sister and little brothers and little cousins or whatever, everybody's getting robbed and people getting shot in the streets and executed in front of their houses or whatever, getting and looted. people that you know, can't whatever. afford guns. Yeah, they they're done. can't afford safety. Yeah, they're done for. I don't know, man. It's a weird, weird, slippery slope we're going down. But... For those of you who are still tuned in, make sure to go check out www.togetherftr.com. This has been a great episode. Uh, we're about to wrap it up. Once again, go check out the website. Be sure to share, uh, like, comment on this uh, video right here. Share it to your friends. Also, be sure to go on YouTube and subscribe to the YouTube channel, Together FTR. Uh, so yeah, really appreciate it, guys. Appreciate you having you Check on, man. Check out some of my Q videos on YouTube. For sure, absolutely, yeah. And well, I mean that that goes along with the Q videos as well, man. Like I, I don't know if I can repost them or whatever on the page, um, but anybody who maybe the best for it. Yeah, yes, yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I was like, nah, I probably won't. But my thing is, uh, yeah, like I said, definitely go check out Q. Like he said as well, uh, you know, a lot of brilliant people are involved in it. It seems like if it's not a scam or whatever. So, yeah, like I said, guys, it's been great. Episode 33. They do say that John F. Kennedy, at his gravestone, there is a big Q on it. Yeah. And they think that John F. Kennedy's son might have faked his death and when he made Q Magazine, might be rising again. Yeah, we're well, supposed to be something. friends. He's supposed to be, like, friends with Trump or something, or, like, they're, I don't they know. They were buddies they, they, back they, in yeah, the 90s. They, like, yeah, they were friends or whatever, and... They're do yeah, dude. It, it's a really cool story and to I check out. I think that's more on the conspiracy side, but yeah. you know, could link. Know. Yeah, you could know. link. That's true. But yeah, guys, really appreciate you tuning in. Episode thirty three. Hashtag together. FTR. Michael Breen. Bless up, baby.